She takes them into the future San Dimas, which is gorgeous and the center of the world for some reason. Oh, I guess because Bill and Ted are from there, right? That's why it's the center of the world. They're the great ones and they built the center of their society around it. That's right. I forgot that from the excellent adventure. One thing I really hate about getting older is when all that magic of youth is lost. Like when you learn that San Dimas is just a place that you buy a Chevy off the 10. This week we're talking about Bill and Ted Face the Music on the Everyman Movie Review. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining me for yet another episode of the Everyman Movie Review. I am so excited that it seems like the industry is winding back up. We have a couple of new things to talk about, new movies, maybe a show here or there in the next couple of weeks, and I am really, really stoked to share those with you. So, of course, it's a regular episode. That means we're going to talk a little bit about the people who made the movie, a little bit about the movie, and then at the end, I'll give you my thoughts on whether or not this movie is worth your time. Now, I thought Bill and Ted was like a cultural phenomenon. And maybe it is, but maybe only for people who are like my age, because I absolutely remember Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. I remember Bill and Ted's bogus journey. And I went into Bill and Ted Face the Music with a lot of excitement about what this could be. And I realized I was watching it with a group of people who had not seen either of those previous two movies. And boy, does that make you feel old. But before I get too far into the movie, Let's get through the pleasantry, shall we? Bill and Ted Face the Music was directed by Dean Parasot. It was written by Chris Matheson and Ed Solomon, the writers of the original Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It is starring Keanu Reeves as Ted, Alex Winter as Bill, Shaw as Kelly, Samara Weaving as Thea, Bridget Lundy Payne as Billy, William Sadler also returning as Death, Anthony Kerrigan as Dennis Caleb McCoy, Aaron Hayes as Elizabeth, Jama Mays as Joanna, Hal Landon Jr as Chief Logan, Holland Taylor as the Great Leader, with guest appearances by the likes of Kid Cudi, Jillian Bell, Dave Grohl, and George Carlin from the grave uh, as the hologram of Rufus uh, using clearly archival footage from the original Bill and Ted's. So a few months ago, weeks ago maybe, I don't know, time means nothing at this point, uh, we checked out Jay and Silent Bob the reboot. And I think I went into that movie and into that review talking about how most of my desire to see this was literally just nostalgia. I love these characters, I love the universe, and I just want to return there to a place that's familiar. Well, Bill and Ted's Face the music, and I keep wanting to put an S on the end of that because it's Bill and Ted something, right? But this is Bill and Ted Face the Music, has kind of the same feeling. It's like, listen, I don't go into this with high expectations. It's a nostalgia factor. I want to go back to San Dimas. I want to see what the Wild Stallions are up to. But just shortly into the movie, I basically figured out what the whole plot was. Uh, I jokingly said it to the people I was watching with and then realized I was right. The entire thing played out exactly as I thought that it would. But we'll get to that in the spoiler section. So Bill and Ted Face the Music. It has been 30 years since the Wild Stallions went on their epic adventure and then their bogus journey to try and write the song that's going to unite all of humanity as one. And... When we join Bill and Ted, we realize that they have taken a very Beatles-esque journey and not so much like the Beatles, where like Sgt. Pepper's is weird, but it's kind of good as well. Uh, More like they've gone off the deep end. They started out as an 80s hair rock band, and now they have moved into super experimental music. And we're meeting them uh, while they're at a wedding for, I think... Bill's stepkid? The real problem here is it gets very confusing. The two families are very intertwined, and both Bill and Ted, as you may remember, use the royal we when talking about basically everything in their life. So it's our kids are both of their kids. Our wives are both of their wives. They say things like, we love you guys, meaning I, Ted, am going to say, we love you guys and speak on behalf of Bill. It's very, uh, it's very codependent, uh, and they do dive into that just a bit during the movie. But after coming home from a very unsuccessful performance, uh, Bill is ready to jump back in the studio and write this song that's supposed to unite humanity, and Ted, Ted has lost a lot of faith, and he thinks that maybe they've wasted their lives trying to do this, even though they've been marginally successful rock stars and apparently haven't really had to work which is kind of what the point of it was back at 
you know, epic journey or excellent adventure uh, with the whole, you know, we're going to be rock stars and not have to worry about school. It turns out they were right. Uh, they didn't have to. But that is when Kelly shows up, played by Kristen Shaw. She is Rufus's daughter. And now she is coming back to meet the great ones, Bill and Ted, because the song that is going to unite not just all of humanity, but all of time and space is going to be written that day at a certain place. And she needs to get them in the right mindset to write this song. So she takes them into the future San Dimas, which is gorgeous and the center of the world for some reason. Oh, I guess because Bill and Ted are from there, right? That's why it's the center of the world. They're the great ones and they built the center of their society around it. That's right. I forgot that from the excellent adventure. But they set them up with a studio setup that is perfect. And they tell them, hey, this is when and this is where the song is going to be uh, first displayed to the world and you need to have that song ready and they don't have the song. But what they do notice is the phone booth, the original phone booth, is still there. It's a prop piece. It's where Rufus's hologram comes out to greet visitors to San Dimas. And so I believe Ted has the right idea of going, getting the phone booth, and traveling forward in time to visit the them in the future that actually have written the song. Get the song, bring it back, and then perform it. And paradoxes aside, um, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack uh, because they actually including this paradox and the time loops that would be created. They address the multiverse. And so what I will say is this is not like some movies that I've done reviews of before where I can say, like Palm Springs, the science makes sense. Nothing about this makes sense. And it doesn't have to because it's Bill and Ted and it's Alex Winters and Keanu Reeves reprising their role from 30 years ago. So that's what I'm here for. I'm here for like, uh, Theodore Logan Esquire. Like, that is what I want. I want the Surfer Valley talk from a couple of old guys, guys who are older than me, I'm guessing, hopefully. And, uh, and the Royal We and the just antics and stuff that they get into. Kind of a spoiler, but not really. At one point, they realize they have to fool themselves into leaving a place and not knowing how they got out of there and thereby escaping the future selves who are there because the future selves will know how they left and be able to track. So they put buckets on their head and then wander around with their hands out, feeling for walls and such. And it's very, it's very Bill and Ted. But that's about as far as I can go without giving away anything too important. But, uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and jump into the spoilers. So if you don't want to hear the spoilers, jump down to the time down below, uh, because the spoilers are about to start right here. So really early in the movie, uh, Kelly hands, uh, or talks about it's at MP 40 that, uh, Prescott and Logan make this song. That's going to unite humanity. And in fact, all of time and space. And immediately, immediately I turn to everybody there and I'm like, funny, it said Prescott and Logan and not Bill and Ted. Um, yeah, so it's definitely going to be the daughters. They're definitely going to hand over the whole franchise to, uh, the daughters and make them the the saviors in this case, and then the ones who, of course, from there on can do the future movies um, and have guest appearances by Alex Winters and Keanu as the dads, but pass it on to the two daughters who are very much uh, like their uh, fathers. And I know that Samara and Bridget are super intelligent women. Uh, I love them in their other roles. I think I've done a review of Ready or Not, uh, and I've watched Atypical on Netflix, which is Bridget, uh, Bridget's show. And I think while Keanu probably is a lot like Ted, maybe uh, Ted's a, a big version of him, I also know Alex Winters has done some amazing documentaries, so he's not really uh, Bill. Uh, but those two women, Samara and Bridget, played such excellent characters that I won't mind Billy and Thea's excellent adventure, which is inevitably going to come next. And in fact, I will probably go see it uh, at a theater because I'm, I'm down for the nostalgia. And this is like not even nostalgia. It's we're taking this thing that you love and we're changing it a little bit so we can keep doing it. But I'm, that's fine. I'm down for it. But nonetheless, as soon as it said Prescott and Logan, MP40, uh, I turned to everybody. I'm like, oh, it's going to be the girls and they're going to pass it on. And somebody said, well, what about MP40? And I'm like, that's like a mile marker. I said, like, that's a mile marker, I feel like. So I bet you they just end up stuck in traffic or something and they have to jump out of the car and like do it right there because the time is there uh, or they're out of time. And you know, jumping to the end, um, that's exactly what happens. 
Uh, the girls uh, end up on the highway with their dads, and there's a super handy guitar center truck there with all the instruments. And somehow this one truck has enough instruments for everyone in the world in a way that doesn't really make sense because Bill and Ted dial infinity, and that makes all these copies of them, and they can go to every universe, to every person in every moment, and hand out instruments, and everybody can play along. That I didn't. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to make sense. I I did love that. Basically, this was Thea and Billy's excellent adventure. Uh, if you have seen the first one and remember the first one, uh, Bill and Ted go have a history assignment, and they go back in time to meet these historic figures, and then end up bringing them to the present for their presentation and get an A on their test, and that way they, they can still hang out. Because uh, Logan, who's a, an officer, I think, at that time, and is now chief of police, he's going to make them not hang out. And I think he's going to make Bill go to military school uh, if they don't get an A. But they get an A because the historical figures, right? So it's great. But this is Billy and Thea going back in time to put together the perfect band. And the more we push towards that end game, I was like, oh, all right. And the only thing that wouldn't be able to be brought in is death. And then and, and then they send the robot through time to kill Bill and Ted. And as soon as he accidentally killed somebody, I'm like, all right, so they're going to go to hell at this point and meet death. And then that's how they're going to get out. And he's going to join them for the show. And if that isn't exactly what happened. Uh, and I, I don't want to make it seem like it's bad. I'm, this is good in all the best ways. The fact that I could predict what was happening really means that I enjoy the franchise. It, it's following a formula and that is okay. I enjoy Fast and the Furious for the same reason. You know what I mean? Like I, I know what to expect when I go and there's something great about that. It's something good about being able to relax at the movies and just like enjoy the show. Vivarium is not that. It is complex and you have to like watch it. I mean, even Palm Springs, I had to restart it twice to follow what was going along. That is not easy watching. And sometimes it is so great to just watch a movie and enjoy it and enjoy the nostalgia. But that is way more than even spoilers should be covered uh, for this movie. Honestly, spoilers, you're going to watch it, you're not going to win. Anyway, let's bring everybody back in and we can wrap up this review right here. So Bill and Ted Face the Music is not going to be an Oscar contender this year. Even in a field that is going to shrink rapidly as we get towards the end of the year, it's not going to compete for any award. But the Everyman Movie Review is not about having a cinematic masterpiece. It's not about the greatness of a movie. It's about how much you enjoy it. And there is something fantastic about being able to kick your shoes off, get back in tune with some characters that we know so well and that we can enjoy. Simple, not one dimensional, but kind of only two dimensional characters. I know how Bill and Ted are gonna react to every situation. When their daughters are introduced, I can assume that Billy and Thea are gonna react very similar to how their dads react. And there's something comfortable about that. It's like slipping into a comfortable pair of jeans or kicking off your shoes at the end of the day, just being able to sit and enjoy something that has funny moments and may be a little predictable because it's formulaic and it's okay. I love Fast and the Furious because it has that formulaic nature. I can go and I know what I'm gonna get and there's no surprises. And it's easy. It's not Vivarium. It's not the phantom thread. It's not something complex that I really need to pay attention to. And we need to have those things as well. And again, this review is about enjoyment. And I thoroughly enjoyed myself watching this movie. Now listen, I have been telling my staff for weeks now, we are hitting the doldrums of this semi-quarantine situation. I have done my best to distance myself, to not go out unnecessarily, and to not risk things that I don't have to. And even so, I have a lot of things vying for my attention. Uh, I have my daily podcast that I've been working on now for the better part of a month. You can check that out at Rob Explains. I've been working on my own social media. You can find me everywhere on online at Robert and Cheek. Uh, and make sure you check out my website, robertandcheek.com. It's the home for all of my projects. Rob explains, 
uh, the Everyman movie review, all of my writings, the books that are available on Amazon. You can find all of that there. I'm running for president, if you haven't heard about that. Uh, Rob Cheek for Prez on all social media and robcheekforpresident.com. And of course, my weekly podcast, uh, Oh, the Anthem podcast with my buddy Corey. We make sure we get a new episode out of our content talking about news and sports and what's going on in the world every single Tuesday. So I got a lot going on. And honestly, I want more movies like Bill and Ted Face the Music that I don't have to get so wrapped up in that I can just sit back and enjoy and have an experience the way that I used to when we would go to the movie. Popcorn, get your soda, get your candy, and just go veg for a while. That's kind of what I want, and I want more of. So I give Bill and Ted's an enthusiastic two thumbs up. Absolutely go see this movie with a caveat. If you have never seen any of the other Bill and Ted movies, most of this is going to go directly over your head. I said the same thing about Jay and Silent Bob reboot. You really have to know the universe. You have to know the characters. They're going to do the shorthand version of introducing everyone. So if you don't know what's going on, if you don't know why, it's not a joke for them to call their wives princesses, then you're probably not going to get a lot of things about this movie. And it may not be for you. That being said, someone who had never seen the Bill and Ted movies still enjoyed this just for the payoff of the movie itself. It is a standalone movie in a franchise that I just happen to enjoy. So I think it really is for anyone and anyone can watch it. I'll just say it really helps if you know about the franchise and you know the characters and you're coming into it with a little bit of knowledge. And like I said, I am looking forward to the next Billy and Thea movie, Bill and Ted, Billy and Thea, whatever they want to call it. Give me more. I am down for it. I will be there in the theaters in 2022, probably at this point, to see that new Bill and Ted movie. So let's just get it made. And I hope you're as excited for my next episode as I am for the future Bill and Ted movie. We are, of course, doing two episodes a week every Thursday and one day in between. Make sure you're following on social media at Everyman Movie. Uh, those links are uh, down in the show notes below. But until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. Have a great week, everybody.